Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today to learn more about our toddler program at Coralier School, which is called uh, the Roots Program. My name is Meredith Orlov, and I am the admissions director at Coraliers, and this is my fifth school year on the admissions team. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Colleen Goddard. I'm the early childhood specialist at Corlier School. And in the fall, I'll actually be holding the title of early childhood division director. So welcome so much. Thanks for joining us. Hi, I'm Ariel Grossman. I am the Roots head teacher um, for the gentle separation and the caregiver and me classes that started this year. Um, I'm also a parent at the school. I have uh, Max who's entering kindergarten and Eva who's gonna be in third grade. Great. So before we get started focusing specifically on our ROOTS program, we just wanted to share that uh, Corlier School supports children starting with our toddler program at around 16 months through fifth grade. We are one of very few schools in New York City that focuses exclusively on these early childhood and elementary years. And we have been doing so for over 50 years at this point. At Corlier's, we support children to become agents of their own learning. Uh, throughout these years when they are naturally most curious. In our early childhood program, we place children at the center and we have a play-based curriculum that eventually builds a foundation for kindergarten and the elementary years where the children are engaging in project and inquiry-based learning. When our fifth grade students leave Corlears, they are lifelong learners and explorers who are confident in who they are as a learner. And they begin uh, their middle, middle school experience ready to uh, make change in their communities. So these are the options for our different Roots classes for the 2022-23 school year. We have a morning session for our gentle separation program. We have um, we are introducing an afternoon session due to the popularity of our program for gentle separation. And we also have a caregiver and me program that meets twice a week. So now we're going to share a bit more about our approach throughout these programs. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Roots program and its focus and tension and authenticity in terms of teaching and learning for young children. So the Roots program focuses on authentic and meaningful learning experiences, which are deeply embedded in the power of play, while also supporting powerful interactions between teachers, children, and families. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in each slide. So we can go to the next slide. So for the ROOTS program, our focus is really on that play-based learning and the deep appreciation and understanding of play as a vehicle for children to express themselves and to learn about the world. So we recognize deeply and authentically that play is child's work. It is the way that a child makes sense of the world, understands the world, and understands themselves in context of the larger social world of shared experiences. Play is a way to reflect. It's a way for children to explore, discover, and develop social skills and skills related to their overall development rooted in concentration, creativity, and also self-expression. Again, this is all embedded in meaningful relationships. So the play-based learning experience promote age-appropriate developmental milestones of growth and achievement. And this is followed by the early childhood educators at Corlears. They observe, they record, and they actually speak to the parents and families about the deep and meaningful learning that is occurring. And all of this, all of this is offered within the safe, nurturing, and supportive environments at Corlears. So we can go to the next slide. So the question is, what will my children learn in Corlears Roots classes? So both the caregiver and me class and the gentle separation classes are once again, rooted in child development and the power of relationships. So no learning is done in isolation. It is always in partnership alongside and with the teacher and or parent or caregiver present. This way, the program celebrates these authentic states of play and wonderment. 
so the child feels comfortable, confident, and competent to explore, to ask questions, to engage in inquiry and discovery. And all of this is so meaningful and actually translates into the achievement of developmental milestones, growth, and learning. We can go to the next slide. So once again, learning experiences for the children are deeply rooted in play, in exploration, in independence, in autonomy, and social skills and language acquisition are the resulting factors and elements that happen as a result of allowing children to explore their environment, motivated by play, motivated by interest. And learning happens both inside the classroom and outside in the yard. This ensures that all the learning at Corlears for the very youngest of learners is hands-on, experiential, and deeply relational. We can go to the next slide. So how is the Roots program developmentally driven? It is driven because it is created in the best interest of children. And it is created to promote, support, and foster developmentally appropriate learning. And this is all embedded in the landscape of inquiry, interest, engagement, and belonging. So when a child feels a sense of belonging, a sense of comfort, familiarity, a sense of security, then they are more inclined to move around the room driven by their internal interests and their internal wonderment and ask questions and most of these questions for very young children are rooted in physical expression and movement. And this is deeply encouraged and truly celebrated in the classroom. Language, literacy, and linguistics are promoted in songs, storytelling, and sharing a spontaneous narrative. And all of this is deeply embedded in the classroom experience. There will always be opportunity for children to engage in songs and storytelling and those spontaneous narratives can be just children exchanging nonverbal or preverbal laughter, um, interest and inquiry, and also just spontaneous stories that are told by the teachers sitting around the snack table or out in the yard as they're looking at a leaf or exploring with the sand or water. It's just an overflow of language and literacy skills that are prominent in these spontaneous moments. You can go to the next slide. In addition, the Roots program is developmentally driven by the materials and opportunities that are presented to the children in the classroom. So other developmental milestones and markers are mathematical and scientific thinking. And this is evident and fostered in the sensory experiences and opportunities for experimentation. Again, these hands-on explorations and problem solving so this can happen at the water table, at the sand table, playing with blocks. Children understand weights and measures and heavy and light. And they understand when things are full or half full or empty. And that all speaks to mathematical and scientific thinking. There is also the very important and meaningful learning that happens in dramatic play. Social dramatic play is the play world or play schema where children respond to and interact with each other as well as their teachers. It is this platform and this stage where they reenact their life worlds. They show us their lived experience and reflect play scenarios that are rich in imagination and creativity. They bring to us all that they have known, lived and want to know about. Next slide. And how will my child learn through play? The classroom environment supports play in every encounter, fostering meaningful encounters and engagement with a variety of materials, such as sand, water, paint, clay. And as you can see in the photo here, a peekaboo curtain. This is a powerful game for children to play with their caregivers, their teachers, and their friends. As they say goodbye and hello, peekaboo and you came back, which is such a reassuring and comforting word, you came back, mama comes back, daddy comes back, and my teachers will always be there when I come back to school. There are also soft climbing structures and the sociodramatic play area, which I spoke of earlier, which provides for and allows the child to explain and reenact all of the world that they have come to know and understand through play. Every sense, 
every single sense in a child's development is activated in moments of play through textures, tone, music, dancing, bubbles, baking, and language are all rooted in deep and authentic learning experiences, discoveries, and varied interests of each of the children at Corlears. Next slide. So the Gentle Separation Program is recommended for ages 16 to 24 months. And again, it is designed to support the child in their first school experience where the separation and attachment process is a meaningful part of the learning. And I would say one of the core elements of the curriculum. So to start that caregiver or parent who brings the child to school will work with and alongside the child and the teachers. And they will engage in what we call the transfer of trust. This transfer of trust soon begins and eventually the caregiver or parent will take a peripheral position and sit at the side of the classroom against the walls while the teacher integrates more significantly into the play and forms a trusting and nurturing engagement with the child. Next slide. The gentle separation curriculum is rooted in this experience of separating from a loved one and attaching to a teacher. So that truly is the core curriculum in the start of the classroom, which is in parallel to that play process and those playful engagements. This actually translates into meaningful learning experiences. So as part of this curriculum and an extension of this curriculum is the support of transitional objects. Transitional objects are developmentally appropriate and they are a welcomed part of the separation process for very young children at Corlears because the intention is for your child to feel a sense of comfort, ease, belonging, acceptance and community, as well as independence and autonomy, which when they choose move towards or hold a transitional object, they are expressing to us that they are independent and they made the choice to self-soothe in the presence of others who trust and love them. It is natural for children to transition at various stages and in different ways that are reflective of their social, emotional, and familial lives. Next slide, please. So the gentle separation also extends in length as well as expands in content and curriculum. So that's a little bit different than the Caregiver and Me program. The classroom holds a variety of materials for rich and powerful sensory, social, language, and linguistic play, as was mentioned before, and also materials that support and foster fine and gross motor development. That can be the use of the soft climbing structure. That can also be for the fine motor development, the use of paint brushes of various sizes, lengths, small, thin, large, uh, using of stickers, using of sand again in clay and manipulating the clay with fingertips. Children have the opportunity to play in the yard as well and engage in movement and song with our music teacher and visit the gym, science room, technology, and Spanish teacher. Next slide. So what drives the curriculum for gentle separation? It is play-based learning, the transfer of trust, the acceptance and acknowledgement of transitional objects, and one of the other major focus is for the first few months is preparing for separation from the caregiver. So once again, we do this by creating an environment that feels welcoming and predictable and where one can literally see themselves. Photos of the children are hung in and around the classroom to create a home-like space where they are free to explore at their own pace. And I'll speak to that a little bit. Um this year, we were really amazed at how this process worked. And I think that as educators and also as parents, we often read so much about how to gently separate or gently um, discipline. And to see it actually fold, unfold in such a beautiful way where the children felt comfortable and safe and seen in the classroom allowed for 
almost all of them to just have a very simple, enthusiastic, I would use the word enthusiastic separation. Um, we have photos of the children uh, in a few places in the classroom and the joy and pride they have in, in noticing. I, I mean, throughout the year during snack, especially, I think, cause they're finally like settled a little bit. They'll look and say like, Mira, Mira, that's me. Um, and we do this intentionally because we want them to feel like this is their home, away from home. Um, it's a very individualized process. And I, I say to parents along with Colleen, we don't have an objective here. The goal is really for your child to feel like they love school and want to come and want to feel like they are, they have ownership over the space. So the way that we did this, um, and I know some families are really interested in the specifics of how it works, is the first six weeks of school at least um, are with the caregivers present. And we start off with them engaging with the children, engaging with them in snacks, sitting with us at morning meeting. Um, the day is really about com community building and having them feel like this is a space that they can explore at their own pace. And then we start to ask the caregivers to step back. So we have chairs and they're sitting more on the periphery. And when a child needs something, we ask the caregivers to let us get them, you know, whatever it is that they need. Um, so really that transfer of trust is starting to happen in an organic way. And then when we see that a child is really playing independently and exploring the room in a, in, in a way that feels they're, they're ready and they don't need that crutch um, of having their own caregiver there, we ask the caregivers to leave for a certain period of time. There's a space for them um, to be waiting. And we ask them to then come back usually like five or 10 minutes, even if the child is doing totally fine, because that reinforces that when we say they're going to come back, that they actually do come back. And then after that has been established and the child seems to be comfortable, we'll have the caregivers stay for as long um, as, the, as the day is. And we we go through that usually two children at a time. We'll start with two children and then go to add another child because we also have to get used to as teachers, you know, handling all of the children without having a caregiver there. And it's not just, you know, their needs, but we have our eyes everywhere. Cause as you know, these toddlers are quick and curious. So we want to make sure that we feel like we have a handle on, on, on exactly where they are and what they're doing. Um, and then we always ask the caregivers to come back for the last five minutes of the day where we look over our visual schedule and ask, you know, did we do all of these things? And then we sing goodbye as a group. So, you know, we definitely, and, and I will check in um, via email with, um, with the families, the parents, if they're not there to just let them know with a photo, you know, how it went and, and, and what the process was. And it felt really good this year um, and appropriate. And there were some families that stayed for a long time and there were some that left right away. And I kept reminding families that this is, it is a gentle separation on purpose and, and we want it to be meaningful for the child and, and the family. You can go to the next slide. Um, I think I basically talked about all this. So <laughs> I said all these things. Um, the Caregiver Me program um, starts out very similar to the Gentle Separation program. Um, for the first semester, we really want the caregivers to feel like they are part of the classroom. They are part of the classroom. They're integral into the curriculum. And we try to respectfully show another way of engaging with, with the children um, that comes from a more educational and philosophical approach. You know, I was very aware this year that a lot of the caregivers, although there were some parents also, and that comes with its own set of challenges, um, you know, these caregivers have been doing this for a long time. They know children, they understand children. Sometimes they've been with these children specifically for a long time. So in no way are we 
intending to overstep boundaries or change how they are with their child. But to set up a space where instead of drawing a circle and say, here's a circle, saying, why don't you step back, give the child the crayon and just see what they do. And I think after a few experiences of seeing how much the child grows when given that independence and that actual physical and mental space, it becomes a little bit more second nature to provide those kind of um, opportunities. Um, so another way that we do this, we can continue to the next slide, um, is by just having formal and informal conversations during the day and then followed up with a newsletter about why we're doing what we're doing. So that there is some research and deep thought into the suggestions that we're making and understanding that these aren't things that you necessarily are gonna do throughout the day with the child, but are for this, for this space. I would say the idea of um, sharing, for example, is something that we do hope bleeds into the rest of the day. Because I think that there is this social anxiety around a lot of these expectation, behavior expectations that are just completely inappropriate, age appropriate for these children. And it's hard when your child doesn't wanna give up their truck because come on, give the truck. But to them, they don't think they're ever gonna get this truck back. So instead of asking the child, please share, which is not appropriate for this age, we will say, um, let's take a turn. Let's take a turn and you can have this truck for one more minute and then it's gonna be um, Jake's turn for the truck. And then you're gonna get the truck back. And that sort of also reinforces this separation or this transfer of trust in that you can trust me because what I say is gonna happen is then gonna happen. And I'm here to help that process along. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, another thing that, that we try to encourage the, the caregivers to do is label what's happening. So you really wanna take a turn with this right now. Instead of saying, you need to take a turn with this, you need to give this really labeling like what is happening and asking a child to wait is just like horrible. <laughs> I mean, us as adults, it's really hard to do. So I think, I think just trying to um, remind and encourage the, the caregivers of what is they're actually capable of. And sometimes it's okay. They can actually go get their water bottles themselves when they fall they can get up and figure out how to move the bike themselves. We don't have to be on top of them. Um, but then sometimes we need to provide language for that. Um, we can go to the next slide. Um, another thing we talk a lot about with the caregiver in me class, and I really do encourage families to do this at home also, is the power of observation. And maybe holding back how much you want to interact with your child. And sometimes even as a teacher, it's like, okay, well, what am I doing here? If I'm not like talking or engaging or interacting. But as I said earlier with, um, with the drawing example, so much of what we say is informing their growth and their play. And we don't need to do that because they're not only quite capable, but they're curious and creative and intelligent beings that have so much potential when you give them the space to do it. So this year it was really interesting because I do think that there's some families with their caregivers that encourage the caregivers to, um, to verbalize a lot of what's happening. Oh, you're going here. Oh, here's a truck and constantly talking. And while there is benefit to that, there is also a huge benefit to being uh, quiet and observing. And of course, when the child needs you, you then interact, but the um, intently in observing and engaging with discernment. And I've been teaching for 15 years, it's hard. Um, but it really is, is important and effective. And it was amazing to see the caregivers um, work with that. Um, we can go to the next slide. 
So in the caregiver and me class, um, the, the first semester, we're only in school for like an hour and 15 minutes. I think this year we're, we actually decided to go to till 10 o'clock where I think we're maybe still talking about that because it felt like a very long time for them. Mostly because at that age, they're really not able to sustain play for a long period of time. Their attention span is, is somewhat shorter. Um, and then the second semester we did extend it till 1045. So every morning they'll come in, we'll have different, um, stations will have something set up in a sensory bin sometimes it's water or sand um, we have these uh, foam balls that they put into tubes and a lot of dumping and filling and dumping and filling and dumping that's what they like to do and there's a lot of learning that happens during that time so usually we'll play for like 45 minutes to an hour and then we have a short morning meeting where we sing hello and everyone just as introduced to the idea of what a classroom community looks like. This is their first experience. Um, if they all sit, it's a miracle. Often that does not happen. Um, and then for the first half of the year, we'll have snack and then sing goodbye. For the second half of the year, um, we will go to the yard and a subject teacher, art or music or movement will come and spend about 20 minutes with us. Sometimes they stay longer because they can't get enough of the children. Um, and then we will sing goodbye. Um, it's a really beautiful day and it feels appropriate. Most of them are super exhausted by the end of it. Um, and of course there is some flexibility in there depending on you know if they're like after a half an hour we can feel the energy needs to, to shift, we can, you know, we accommodate for that. Um, we can go to the next slide. Um, so this just basically is what I just said. I think it's easier to look at. So for the um, gentle separation, um, it's only an hour and a half in the beginning. And, and this year, the children played for over an hour every morning, and we decided to just let that happen. And then when we start you know, at a certain point, like, okay, we have like a half an hour left of school, we need to feed them. So we would stop, but, but um, it really depends on, on how the morning is going. Um, so we have activities out similar to what I was saying. Um, we also have some puzzles. There's a dramatic play area with kitchen, open-ended kitchen materials. Um, we didn't change that the whole year because it was a place that they went to every single day. And usually, as teachers will shift things when we feel like, okay, they're, they're ready for a different kind of inspiration. We also have some gross motor um, options on the carpet. We have some climbers and some seesaw type things and books are always an option. We almost always have an art exploration as well. Um, so the morning is pretty similar to the caregiver and me for the first half of the year. For the second half of the year, when we add another hour and a half, we do go to the yard for at least a half an hour and have a subject teacher as well come. And the day feel, we, we slowly uh, phased into that longer day. It did, it did take a little bit of adjusting because a lot of them I think were napping around 11.30 or 12. Um, and again, we just, we want it to be gentle. We want it to be appropriate. And if a child needed to leave early, we would be fine with that. Um, I think we encourage families to just talk to us and for us to talk to them. And we want them to have a meaningful experience at school. It's not about, okay, we got, we were able to stay for this amount of time. It's, it, it's, it's not about that. Um, I think that that's all I have to say. I'll just talk you through some of these photos here. So th these are some, some just beautiful images. Well, the one in the middle is a child at the light table. We have uh, magnet tiles, a friend playing with a puzzle, and then the, the famous kitchen that there's a magnet tile there. Literally everything that we had ended up in the kitchen the whole year. Um, if you wanna keep going, I can just briefly speak to. The child on the left um, is playing with water we had a water out a lot at the easel um it seemed we have you can see it come on the paper the kind of paper we have um but we also made a number of paintings that just took 
um, about two months. And we would have each class come and just add what they needed to add and their layers upon layers. Um, the middle image is a pop-up toy, which they all really, really engaged in. Uh, a reminder of the hello, goodbye, I come, I go back, I come, I go back. Can you move that? Next. Uh, the one on the left, again, is an example of the climber. Um, it was so interesting thinking back at the beginning of the year how I was terrified to let any of them climb because um, they were so wobbly. And, and then by the end of the year, they're, they're totally independent. Um, and these are just some other explorations they have. It's such, a, it's such a clean classroom in the morning. And then by the end, it's like a tornado has gone through. You can go keep going through. And just some, some shots of what's happening. It was also really, really interesting to see how much engagement they did with each other. I think um, at this age, they don't typically acknowledge other children and they, and they really did. They really saw each other and found comfort in one another. Thank you so much, Ariel, and thank you so much, Colleen, for sharing about our program. Um, thank you to everyone viewing um, this information session. And if you are interested in moving forward and submitting an application uh, to our program, here we have outlined what the steps are for our admissions process. We are currently still on, uh, doing conducting rolling admissions uh, for the fall. Uh, so we look forward to getting to know your family through our process. Um, another question that does come up quite a bit is um, what happens after um, your roots year at four years? And um, typically um, children who are admitted to uh, the um, Earlier's Roots program would be offered re-enrollment for the following school year into our Seedlings program, which is a twos, threes program. And um, we are tracking your child's progress um, throughout the first half of the year. Um, and so if we see any reason to maybe monitor your child a bit further, we'll engage with a conversation for you. But this is, um, this is, the idea behind how um, what your child's trajectory would look like at core leaders um, following their um, their roots um, experience. So I'd like to just thank you all again for joining us today. And um, we are available and look forward to getting to know you uh, in our process. So have a wonderful day.